Hello and welcome to GDC 2023. I'm Stefan Ivanov and today I'll be taking you behind the scenes of how am I developing digital clothing. We are going to have a look into all the steps through the whole production as we go from concepts as well modeling and texturing and at the end we are getting a full digital version of a person inside Unreal Engine. Before showing you a short video that I prepared, I wanted to talk a little bit more about digital identity and why it's something that's important. As people started spending more and more time online either on social media, gaming or other applications, they also want to be known about the content that they are posting or about the content that they are creating. In the last 10 years, the anonymity online has been decreasing and more and more people want to be known and want to have credit about the content that they are creating. This is where digital identity comes into hand. If we look into social media, creators have been trying to up their game for the last years and they are trying to create more memorable experiences and content for their audience. This is one of the areas that I believe the digital identity comes into place. The video which you are seeing now is created for a real-life person which was scanned and brought inside Unreal. We also developed custom clothing using 3D Studio Max. Not only that we modeled the clothing there, but also we created all the skinning, rigging, and then exported everything back to Unreal and take advantage of the features that Lumen is presenting for creating realistic looking materials and scenes. First part was to do all the photography of our model and I wanted to show you a case where all the photography had a little bit of issues. So uh, first thing I'm going inside Lightroom and just adjusting it a little bit so all the levels and everything can fit nicely together. Once this is being done, we are grabbing all the images inside Reality Capture. And here you can see me first adjusting the volume for aligning and making sure that uh, everything is nicely calculated and we have all the point cloud data. Usually aligning and calculating the initial data doesn't take too much of a time. It's something that uh, happens quite fast, even if you're having quite a lot of images. But the, the next part that we are doing, reconstructing the 3D model, is something that takes a little bit longer, especially if you're going for a more highly detailed version. Usually what I'm doing while waiting for such calculations to be done is I can just go into Photoshop or uh, either start collecting references or maybe, or maybe, as in this case, start sketching out and creating some of the design ideas that I think would fit nicely for this project. Some of the more recent innovations and improvements in CPUs made by Intel are really helping on that process being done smoothly. And it's now I'm just in Photoshop sketching some rough ideas just so that I can get a couple of different designs, see which one will fit best. And once I picked some of the designs and my calculations are done, I'm going to go back inside Reality Capture, finish the texturing part, and then I'm going to export all the model so that we can start cleaning it and after getting the clean version, we can move it to MetaHuman. Creating and developing a digital brand and digital wear which people can use, first the content creators, then also their audience, is something which uh, will bring uh, one step up to the interactions with your crowd. As I'm coming from the game development world and we look into this problem from my perspective, games nowadays have been giving the opportunity for players to choose for many different skins. And some of those skins have been more rare or more hard to obtain and it's become a part of people identifying and uh, aligning their vision with the character and the game and everything else with those skins. In the last few years, as the demand for being more unique online becomes greater and as well a lot of the games starting to introduce UGC or user generated content, it's becoming easier for people to use assets that were custom made and in this way they can be first unique and second they can look the same way in all the games that they are playing. Now that I have the model inside 3ds Max, I can use uh, some of the tools that are in the software for selection. In my case uh, I found out that uh, the lasso tool is uh, the easiest one to use so I'm just going over and selecting all the parts that uh, we are not gonna need. What we want to have as a final result is uh, clean face, uh, we mostly care about the front part of the face, we don't care about the hair because this is something that we are going to additionally add uh, inside MetaHuman.
As a final thing, I'm resetting everything and making sure that everything is straight so that we can after that export it and be sure that everything is properly aligned and it will properly align after that inside MetaHumans. Once this is done, we are just exporting the model and going directly inside Unreal where we are going to import our scanned base. We are going to get everything together with uh, automatically creating uh, material and as well automatically importing the diffuse or the albedo texture. And now we are going to jump into creating a uh, MetaHuman identity. You can see that uh, I'm uh, just renaming uh, the file. And now we have our identity file completely empty from where we are going to start loading some of the data that we just cleaned. So this means that we are going to add the face. And now the next steps are going to be uh, very important that we align the camera and everything that fits straight to our face because this is uh, how we're going to use the software to align all the features of that face to uh, a proper point. So you can see that uh, I already uh, got uh, the front of the face and now we are going to track all the active frames so by tracking all the active frames we are leaving unreal to start uh, measuring and uh, do all the calculations so that uh, it recognizes where all the points the important points for the face are and you can see that uh, we have now uh, all the points uh, correctly identified and once this is done we can solve and create our metahuman identity and then we can say to unreal to create a mesh which after that once we open the metahuman on our browser we are going to have the base done for us Now, being inside MetaHuman, we can see that uh, we have uh, our MetaHuman uh, created from the scan data that we just tracked. It doesn't have any uh, textures or anything like that, so what we need to do uh, as a first step is to go over our skin colors. I'm using here a second monitor to compare if everything looks the same on the model and on the scan that we did, and then on the values which I'm picking inside MetaHuman. MetaHuman allows you to pick from a quite huge variety of uh, different hairstyles. Uh, as you can see here, I wanted to play a little bit and just to see if we can get uh, some interesting results, maybe with some of the other uh, hairstyles. Here I want to give a quick note that uh, sometimes MetaHuman still can be a little bit limiting just because of the variety and the choices that we have inside, but this is a content that uh, Epic are adding constantly, so it's being expanded and there are more new and new things added all the time. Once I'm happy with the hairstyle, I'm starting to go for the makeup. Again, I'm using second monitor and here I'm just uh, switching between the MetaHuman browser and as well the reference image just so that uh, you guys as well can have a look on how exactly everything looks like.
I'm making also some small tweaks and adjustments just because I thought that the scan didn't completely capture the shape of the face. So I started tweaking and this is something that uh, is completely possible and doable inside uh, the MetaHuman Creator to start tweaking after the scan data. If you are not happy with the result or if there are some small things that you uh, see that might be changed or improved. And once we are happy with uh, the result and how everything was done, we can uh, go back inside Unreal, uh, use the bridge, and then we can download, and then we can download the whole content inside the engine. This will create for us a blueprint with uh, all the elements that are from MetaHuman, and I'm going to select and export just the body, we just need the body for now, so that we can start working on some of the clothing. I'm going to export it as an FBX, and this FBX I'm going to bring now inside 3ds Max. Since we don't need any of the bones or any skinning or anything like that, I'm just going to select and delete it for now. It will be a little bit easier and faster for us to, to work. And on this section, uh, I'm just going to go clean the body, remove some of the parts that we don't need and I'm going to make a duplicate of already the mesh that we have for, for the body itself. The tool that I'm going to use is going to be Retopology. I'm going to use it so that I can create the base mesh for the clothing that's on our model. Retopology makes it very fast and easy to create new clean mesh and after that use it as a base for further modeling or developing your assets. As you can see, in this case, I'm just adding up a little bit uh, more details and adding up some, some things that uh, I wanted to have for my model. And again, switching back and forth between 3ds Max and what I have as a reference. Studio Max is exceptionally good at and this is hard surface modeling. Here we have the shoulder which is going to be part of our character clothing and part of our design. Actually this is the main piece of our design and as you can see it's uh, a little bit heavier in terms of polygons 
but there is a lot of surfaces that uh, are very sharp and very nice edges and uh, these are all like hard surfaces that are being modeled inside 3ds max i wanted to show you a little bit of a trick and something just to uh, understand how good exactly and how much of a control you have So if I create here a plane, I'm just going to rise it up a little bit and we're going to assign a basic gray material just so that we see things a little bit better and let's give it darker edges. Now I'll convert it to a double poly and we'll just extrude the front part like that and let's make three copies. So if we take the first one and then we apply turbo smooth let me turn on the wireframe you can see that we are uh, getting these smooth surfaces all the way from an edge to an edge on the second one we can select this edge i'm again going to apply turbo smooth again going to give it onto three iterations and now let's get back inside editable poly i will switch on the result which will show me how exactly my modifications look like so we're gonna turn on this but you can still see the orange frame which is uh, the mesh underneath and by selecting this edge I'm going to use chamfer so using a chamfer let's remove all the, the let's remove all the additional elements and I'm going to then smooth it out so here you can see how much control I have if I want to make the edge a little bit tighter but still quite smooth now for the last one let's do exactly the same we are going again to add to the smooth iterations on three going back to editable poly toggling off so that we see the result selecting the edge and this time instead of a chamfer what i'm going to use is an extrude so this might be a little bit weird that we are extruding an edge let me turn off turbo smooth just so to show you what the result looks like so if i extrude it you can see that we are getting this uh portion going out but we can actually remove it like this by removing the height and then with the parameter under here we can change the two edges and these are two control edges which are going to help us make those very sharp and nice corners so let me stop this for a second turn back on the turbo smooth then extrude you can see that this part can we can control if we want the edge to go inwards or outwards so this gives us very very good control but in our case we want just to make it a very sharp edge so what i can do is just tighten those two control edges and then we are going to have this very good result as I said, hard surface modeling inside 3ds Max is something which is great and very, very easy and accurate to do. Once the model for the shoulder is done and I'm happy with the result, I'm just exporting everything for Substance and inside Substance I'm baking all the details from the high poly to the low poly and starting to do a little bit of texturing. In this case I wanted to use a kind of simple material so it's just a, a metallic base with a paint on top and as you can see I'll be adding a couple of more extra layers for dirt just so that we can bring a little bit just so that we can make that asset look more realistic. Usually when I'm adding dirt I'm trying to add a couple of different layers this way it looks more natural and as well start giving different values in terms of roughness, in terms of intensity and color and everything that uh, you can change and everything that feels and everything that feels logical to do on that asset. I also like to use uh, some of the brushes that are inside Substance to just add more details into some places or remove some of the details again to improve and add on top of the factor of making it feel more organic and more natural.
Once the shoulder is being done, I'm uh, getting back the I'm getting back inside 3ds Max, and this time I'm bringing the full rig inside 3ds Max and adding the clothing to the whole rig. Since we already have the skinning done, I just had to include the clothing as well, and uh, then I started testing out to make sure that everything works fine. Now that we have also the clothing for our character, we are going to bring everything uh, inside Unreal. I'm going to start adjusting a little bit some of the materials and we are going to get our final result. Developing digital clothing, in my opinion, opens new possibilities to create different and interesting looks that maybe are not even possible to create in real life. Some of the clothing could be animated, we could have fear fixes and many different moving elements. Because I wanted to give you something to remember from this presentation and also something that you can test on your own, there is going to be a QR code that appears on the side of the screen and if you scan the QR code inside your TikTok application, you will be able to try the clothing that you see on the screen at the moment. You can make a video and you can save it either for you or if you want you can use it to post it on social media. Thank you all for your time and interest in my presentation. I hope you have a great rest of GDC.